Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Washington Crossing National Cemetery. At this time, military honors will take place. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Marine Corps, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones, honor roll, and faithful service. Thank you so much, and for your service also. Those are three brass rifle casings. They symbolize the rifle volley that you heard. Each casing represents duty, honor, and country. Please accept these, and please accept our condolences. I do accept with great gratitude. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'll ask Andrew Short, Tom Sun, please come forward at this time. everybody for being here. Um, it means a lot to myself and family. I recently heard a quote that said, you only truly become a man after you bury your father. At the time, I didn't quite understand what that meant. I thought to myself, I'm a man. I have a successful career. I live at the beach in California. I have a beautiful girlfriend. What I realized that quote meant was about stepping up as the man of the house, taking care of your mother, making the tough decisions as the man of the house, and honoring your father's legacy. It is not only now my responsibility, but my honor to fill my father's shoes. My father was a simple man. As a proud Marine, he loved his wife, his children, his family, his friends, his fellow Marines, his causes, and his motorcycle. As I laid my head on my father's chest while he took his last breaths, 
I can honestly and wholeheartedly say I have zero regrets as his son and him as my father. I made sure this loving man knew how much his son loved, admired, and respected him every day of his life. When asked by anyone who's never met my father, what is your dad like? My simple response is, my father's childhood was less than desirable, and the day he became a father, he made the conscious decision to, to become the best father he could. He decided to always make sure his children and wife knew how deeply he loved them. He decided to always put the needs of his family, friends, and fellow veterans before his own. As tough as this has been, I find great comfort in knowing my beautiful sister was holding her arms wide open, waiting for his arrival. I know they are both together, causing trouble while smiling down <laughs> My father's goal in life was simple. He wanted to be a good man. Not only did he achieve that goal, but he touched more lives along the way than he will ever know. If I'm half the man my father was, I'll be just fine. Today is not a day of sadness, but a day of celebration and love. Today is a day to cherish the ones you love, and never forget the ones you've lost. This is what my father would have wanted. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Oh my God. Oh. Andrew and Lauren and I came to see this amazing cemetery a couple of days ago. Doing so changed what I wanted to say here today. God and Mary. Oh my God. It struck me that day that while well, this service is about time, Tom was about something much bigger than himself. He enlisted in the Marine Corps at age 18 to serve his country in an unpopular war, Vietnam. Like all military at that time, he was not welcomed home by his country from that terrible conflict. He was changed by experiencing war, changed in some painful ways, he lived with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, the rest of his life, and changed in some remarkable ways also. While he lived his life as a wonderful husband and an amazing father with an accomplished career, he was also, in every moment, deeply and irrevocably dedicated to the causes of veterans. He was a warrior in Vietnam, and he was a moral warrior for the remainder of his life. He epitomized the best qualities of a warrior. He was loyal to his God, to his country, to his family, friends, and community. He was devoted, again, to God, country, family, friends, and community. He was compassionate. Tom would say, everyone has their sorrow. He had a tender heart towards all, and he acted on it, reaching out in service to so many. I am so much a better person because of Tom. I have worked hard to cultivate in myself his best qualities that he embodied. For me, my cup runneth over with gratitude that we found each other in this lifetime and that I got to spend over 50 years basking in his love and in his light. As Andrew said, Tom said many times, I just want to be a good man. Over this past week, that has been a constant in the condolences offered to us. So many said and wrote, Tom was a good man. We are here to affirm that you truly were that, my beloved husband. You came, Tom, and accomplished what you came for. You can rest in peace with our cherished daughter, Megan. These men who you see standing here in honor guard today live the same values that Tom did. They all knew him, they all loved him, and he loved them all, and women. <laughs> they would all do anything for one another for them to stand here in this greatest honor and respect and love for Tom means so much to me. 
I thank the honor God. We are all here today to join with these noble men and women to witness the laying to rest of a brave veteran. As you look around this whole beautiful setting, so still, well, so silent, not quite, <laughs> so peaceful, you see thousands of burial sites of veterans, men and women, who also gave of themselves for something bigger than themselves. We must always keep our veterans in our hearts. There is a saying, freedom is not free. Our country is not perfect by any means. It may be divisiveness and discord, but thank goodness our country recognizes and honors veterans in this way, in this sacred place. Tom paid the price of sacrifice for his country and was proud to do it. He never asked for special recognition and would in fact shy away from it, which is one of the reasons I wanted over the top recognition for him today. <laughs> the slogan of the honor guard is, they gave all that was asked, now it's our turn. I would say that the veterans and those who champion the veteran causes, including my dear Tom, have given and continue to give more than is asked. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff, and uh, I was just Tom's friend. And he likes to remind me that he was my only friend. Um, I met him seven years ago in August of uh, 2013. He called up my center and said, I have a project I'd like to discuss with you. And so we arranged to meet. He said, come over to France and do what? So usually stories that start out with two guys walk into a bar at New Hope, we know how to get in. This isn't one of those stories. Um, I walk in, Tom was sitting there and he was looking all bikery and you know, he had his, his stuff on and he wasn't one of those Wall Street bikers that you see in New Hope. He, he had some miles on, good hard miles. And we sat and talked for over two hours. We, we talked about everything. We talked about our families, we talked about the tattoos on his arm. Um, he carried tattoos of dog tags of brothers that he lost in Vietnam. And on his wrist, he had the numbers 9, 30, 11. That was the day his daughter died. So we talked about that too. And he told me about this, this wonderful foundation that he and his wife had created to honor her memory. And he said, Jeff, I'd like to order, offer veterans yoga. I spit out my beer because I couldn't put the two things together. <laughs> but once we started talking about it, he said, look, I've used yoga for 50 years. I've used it to learn how to meditate, learn how to relax, learn how to stretch. And he offered these programs for free. He said, all I need you to do is find me some sites. So seven years ago, this week, we started our first class in Bristol. Since then, we have taught dozens of classes, hundreds of classes in many sites around the Delaware Valley and even as far as Hawaii. So it has been my privilege to be part of Megan's Foundation Board and also to be Tom's friend. He quite simply was one of the finest people I've ever, I've ever met. And uh, I'd like to offer kind of a Marine salute, if you will. Marines like to make a lot of noise sometimes. You, know, you might have heard them coming in on their bikes today, but um, I'm going to ask a few Marines to lead us, and then I'd like you all to join in the next time. Marines, can I get a new rock? That was the weakest answer. <laughs> I think we can do better. Very sorry. Marines, rock. Okay, now it's your turn. Time to become honorary Marines for just one second and show the Marines how it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a new rock? Well done, well done. I'm sure that Tom heard that all the way in West Heaven where he is today. He and Megan are enjoying it. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Be sure to introduce yourself. Tom is my brother in law. Really is my dear sister. -in -law. I tried to be as poked together as I could, but this is not who I am. <laughs> Tom knows who I am. Give him one more laugh. His great laugh. 
<laughs> At my expense. <laughs> People that know me, I have a little bit of a letter thing. I have about 10 posts. This is the one that Tom liked the list. <laughs> in on many rides that we took together in other places. This is my summer coat. This is my formal coat. <laughs> I hope I can hold it together as much as Andrew Green held it together. Uh, and I know how I wanted to say to stop what I wanted to say, but. There's no chance that I would be able to get through it all. So I'm going to say that at the end. What I want to say to start, though, is something I've been thinking about a lot lately, uh, is the many little ironies that there are in life. One of them is that a man, like this man that we are gathered here today for, would be named Short. <laughs> This man is anything but short. Physically, he's not the tallest guy on the block or in the neighborhood, but in everything else that he was, he was tall. He tried to list all of the things that he was. First off, you couldn't, because he was so many different things to so many different people. But if you tried, uh, some of the things on the list would be that he was a husband, he was a father, he was a brother, he was a brother-in-law, he was a veteran, and he was a Marine. In all of these things, he was tall. He was tall and he was proud. As a husband, he was tall and he was strong. Strong like a tree with great limbs to reach out and around and hold his beautiful wife. Always there, always steady, even in the wind. As a father, he was very tall. He was larger than life. And he was proud. He was as, as tall as the hills in the distance, and he was proud, so proud, of his two beautiful children. As a brother and a brother-in-law, he was really tall. He was tall like a fence to surround and protect those that were in his family. And he was like that for everyone that he knew and loved. He was tall enough to move mountains. And that's because as a veteran and a Marine, he was a mountain. He was as tall as they come. People that knew him they looked up to him because he was so tall. There were very few hurdles he could not climb over because of the height of his determination. He was so tall that he could reach out from his home in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and he could grab a hold of you. <coughs> Whether you were in Boston or in Baltimore, he was so tall he could reach out to you even all the way to the coast of California. And he could just reach out and he could grab hold of you. And he often did. One of the things that he liked to reach out, to grab and lift up the most was his brothers, the veterans. He reached out to all veterans every day to let them know that he was there for them. Whatever it was that they needed, he was going to try and help them. There were other tall men and women that helped him with this. Some of them are here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He was a great man in a world where there are not as many great men around us as there used to be. And now there is one less. To finish what I came here to say today, I want you all to know that Sergeant Arthur Thomas Short, United States Marine Corps, was tall. He was so tall that he could and did reach out from wherever he was at any given time. He reached out to be a friend to everyone. 
So what I could have stopped this with is, Tom Short was my friend, and I will miss him forever. May he finally rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Short family, I would like to take this opportunity to thank members of the Marine Honor Guard, members of Tom's veteran organizations, and most importantly, the relatives and friends for the love and support you've shown by your attendance as well. This does conclude the services here at Washington Crossing National Cemetery. As a final tribute to Tom, each of you are welcome to come forward. You may place your palm just upon his urn before exiting to your vehicle. Yeah. 